Hey guys, there's a philosophical problem I want to talk with you guys about when it comes to baseball replays. This problem comes about when we stick with real life transactions and lineups, but we have games that are based only on real life statistics. I'm going to call this the Hunky Shaw problem, and the reason why will become apparent, I think, pretty quickly. So, who was Hunky Shaw? I don't think I did a video on him before, but I know I've written about him. I'm going to show you what I wrote here. This is from the beautiful Baseball Replay Journal. This is Hunky Shaw. Hunky Shaw was a star player in the Pacific Northwest um, around 1906, 1907, and 1908. In 1908, he made a single appearance with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He appeared in one game, he had one plate appearance, and he struck out one time. That was the extent of his Major League history. Now you would look at that and you would think, who in the world cares about this guy? Well, let me tell you, when you look at players who are like this, you start noticing things that are really, really interesting, including things that makes us wonder about how we're doing these replays and whether our approach is the correct one. So Hunky Shaw, as you can see here, appeared in that one game at Philadelphia, Philadelphia, and uh, he was a pinch hitter, did not play in the field. As a result, if you play with Hunky Shaw in any game that is designed around using Hunky Shaw's statistics only in the major leagues, any game that does not take the minor leagues into account, he will be listed only as a pinch hitter. You won't be able to do anything else with him. Now, that's a problem. You might not think that that was a problem, but it is a major, major problem. And it's not just because Hunky Shaw later on went to the Pacific Northwest and set all sorts of records and did all sorts of crazy stuff. No. The problem is that Hunky Shaw came up as a backup third baseman for the Pirates. But the way that we create seasons does not allow Hunky Shaw's defense to come out. In fact, in any major game... You will not see Hunky Shaw with any position other than pinch hitter. So let's take a look here again. Hunky Shaw will have a good opportunity to get to the front this year. He's always been waiting for the chance. With Tommy Sheehan signed to Brooklyn, the Pirates' third bag will be practically without a regular until A.M. Stork reports. Now, who was A.M. Stork? Well, we'll look that up in a second. We'll try to figure that out. When you look through some of these um, newspapers, you can see what the problem was. The big problem that the Pirates were dealing with at the beginning of the season was that Honus Wagner was retiring. He was, what, like 32? And he said that he was out. He was actually a holdout that season, as we all know. Wagner's 1908 season is one of the most famous of all time. The question was what they were going to do with Fred Clark. Fred Clark, as you may know, ended up playing third base in the end, and there was no way that Hunky Shaw, who had, as of yet, never played in the major leagues, uh, was going to displace him over at third base. However, Shaw was the backup third baseman on the club, and he was on the club for quite some time. His uh, first name, Royal, so there's Royal Shaw, this lad looks good, and there are all sorts of articles about him. Now, the fact that we have a lot of articles about him doesn't mean that he was necessarily a great player. Rather, it's because he happened to play in Pittsburgh, and it just so happens to be that newspapers.com has a lot of archives of Pittsburgh newspaper articles, right? You'd have more articles about New York guys if we had a better selection of New York papers. And on and on it goes. Royal Shaw ends up uh, sitting... Uh, Right here, I believe. Yep, that's him. It's kind of hard to see in these old photos. And so on and so on, and we can keep going down. Now, unfortunately, Shaw ended up uh, playing not very well at the very end of training camp, which is one of the reasons why he lost the position, and that's the reason why Clark ended up at third base. Now, we go take a look at this. So we go take a look at the uh, Pirates, first of all, and you can see the uh, issue. I said Clark. I mean Tommy Leach was at third, play third base. So the issue that we have here is not just Tommy Leach playing at third base because he played a lot of third base in 1908, right? So we go look down here at his standard fielding, and uh, 1907 he had, what, 33 games at third. 1908, all of a sudden, 150 games started. He was the regular third baseman every single day. So there's Tommy Leach for you. Who were the backups, however? Now, this is where you have a problem. One backup was Charlie Starr. You should remember Charlie Starr. He was going to be the man who would replace Honus Wagner. 
That's a trivia question for you. Charlie Starr uh, ended up with uh, four starts at shortstop when Wagner was a holdout. He played at second a little bit, and then he played at third base for two games, two complete games, and had an 800 fielding percentage. He probably didn't have an arm strong enough to play third base. Who else was the backup third baseman for the Pirates? Well, the only other player they used all season was Alan Stork. Alan Stork, when we go look at his fielding, had three games started a third, six appearances overall. So uh, 37 innings and an 875 fielding percentage. Now it gets worse. It gets worse because when we start looking at these players, we can see that Alan Stork doesn't come onto the team until mid-June. Right, so that's a problem. What are you going to do at the beginning of the season if somebody's injured or if you want to make a change? Now, Starr was with the team at the beginning of the season, but if you're thinking that you're going to really play like this is uh, 1908 and you're going to give yourself the freedom to play around with the players and see what you can do, Charlie Starr is probably going to play at shortstop like he played in the beginning of the season and would probably not play at third. This means that your choice at third base is going to be who? It's going to be Tommy Leach or nobody. And the reason why it's Tommy Leach or nobody is not because there's some historical problem. No, it's because the games that we create, again, do not take the minor leagues into uh, consideration. Now, let's go take a look here at what uh, Royal Hunky Shaw did in the minor leagues. So this is his complete record from baseball reference. And uh, here you can see he played with Tacoma for a while, was with Jersey City after being with Pittsburgh. Ended up in uh, Providence and in, um, uh, over in uh, New England a little bit more. And then finally was in San Francisco, went back to Spokane and then Seattle. And this is around the time he really made a name for himself. All right, that's what happened to uh, uh, Hunky Shaw. When we look at how he was fielding, he started off at third base. He was a third baseman, and that's how he came up with the Pirates. The idea was to let him play third. Now, I don't know if this fielding register rating, ranking is 100% uh, complete. I imagine this probably comes from some of the old baseball guides, and I've seen before with baseball reference that there are incomplete records from back then. This is a big problem, though, and it points to a problem that we have over and over and over again with these uh, replays and with the type of games that we tend to play. It's not such a huge problem if you have a guy who had at least a couple innings in the field. Usually you can figure out where he was going to play. And you could make an adjustment if you needed to for the type of league that you're running. But for the hunky shaws of the world, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if the guy had one pinch running appearance or one pinch hitting appearance? And this happened more frequently, especially in the dead ball era, than you think. Now, the place where this becomes crazy is that there is a game that solves this problem. That's OOTP. OOTP has a complete minor league database. Well, it a mostly complete minor league database to go along with the major league database. That includes all sorts of baseball records from baseball reference to go along with this to try to solve this type of issue. But there's an issue. When I took a look for Hunky Shaw in the OTP database, I couldn't find him, not in the minor league database. You know the reason why? It's because the minor league database, no OTP, isn't even close to complete for seasons before. I think it's like 1919 or something like that. In fact, you can tell this if you play with OTP yourself. Start a brand new game in, say, like 1904. Try to do it with historical minor leagues on and ask yourself where all the minor leagues went. They're just not there. They're not put in the game. It's not a priority. They're probably not going to put it back. You're not seeing people on the forums clamoring for early minor leagues. I mean, I'm pretty crazy, but I'm probably not that crazy, right? But it's an issue when it comes to players like Hunky Shaw because if you're using OTP and playing a 1908 Pirates replay, he's not going to be rated as a third baseman, and he played outfield later on, but he should be rated at third base. He's your backup third baseman. And the problem is that so many people don't know this. This is one of these real bizarre things because the answer, especially thanks to baseball reference, is right in front of us. I mean, this page is not difficult to find. It's right here. But the problem that we have is that we need to know that this page exists and we need to start taking advantage of this and figure out ways to incorporate this into our replays. Now, what I would do differently if I were creating a game and I were looking at an individual season is I would do a lot of research on players who were extremely marginal, players under a certain threshold, and try to come up with major league equivalencies as best as possible so that they could play the roles that they were designed to play. 
You see this with some games for some seasons, right? It's not surprising if you have a game that comes out with like a 1994 season that includes some extra minor league players to simulate what would have happened if there had been September call-ups at the end of the season, right? That's that's not strange. That's the sort of thing we would expect to have happen. Well, we need to look at other parts of baseball history and allow this sort of thing to happen again. This way we can stay away from guys with like totally bizarre and extreme player cards that can be misused. This way we can stay away from teams not having enough players because of the Hunky Shaw incidents. And this way we can give a chance to players who never got a chance in real life and were never really able to make it happen. Love to know what you guys think about it. Let me know down below. And uh, we're going to have more on this subject because there's a lot more to say. This problem is bigger than you think. And I don't think a lot of people understand sort of some of the more philosophical implications behind this. Talk to you later. Bye.